One day, the owner brought some people to see the railway. He showed them everything. They travelled in the trains and looked at stations and bridges and coaches. Yes, they would say thoughtfully, we'll take this, or no, we won't take that. They made notes in their books. Peter Sam whispered to Sir Handel, men came and did that on our old line. And then, said Sir Handel, soon afterwards it was, it was, so, finished Peter Sam. Peter Sam didn't sing anymore. He wanted to cry. The other engines were sad too. What's the matter with you all? His driver asked him one day. You look like dying ducks. We don't want to be sold said Peter Sam miserably. Sold? The driver was surprised. Who to? To those people who came and talked about taking things. You silly little engine, laughed his driver. They're not going to buy us. They're going to take our pictures on television. And he tried to explain what that meant. Not going to be sold, not going to be sold, sang Peter Sam. He could hardly wait to tell the others. He told them about the television as well, and they were pleased and excited too. All except Sir Handel. I don't hold with it, he grumbled. Vulgar, I call it. Fancy traipsing about making an exhibition of yourselves. I won't do it, I tell you. Tell you something, indeed. Just let the thing controller come here. I'll tell him something. Scarlo, he said nothing. He just winked at Peter Sam, like this. The next day, when the thing controller did come to explain about the television, Sir Handel kept strangely quiet. Now said the thin controller at last. I want every engine to take part. I d don't, don't feel well, quavered Sir Handel. You poor engine, said the thin controller gravely. You can stay in the shed. Sir Handel smiled broadly. And your driver and fireman shall take you to pieces. That will make a very interesting picture. Just what we need. Sir Handel's feelings were beyond words. That's that, said the thin controller. Now, Scarlo, will you take Agnes, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima and Beatrice? Yes, please, sir. I was hoping you would let me have them. Duncan shall have a good train, while Rusty with Mr. Hugh and the men can show how we mend the line. Please, sir, what about me, sir? asked Peter Sam anxiously. The thin controller smiled. You, Peter Sam, shall pull the special television train. Oh, sir, oh, sir, bubbled Peter Sam in ecstasy. The television men built towers for cameras beside the line. They put cameras on Ada, too filled Gertrude with wires and instruments. Some trucks coupled behind carried aerials and generators. Everyone practiced hard and they knew just what they had to do. At last the time came and the announcer gave the signal. We're on the air, we're on the air, of Peter Sam and he rode the heavy train to the shops where Sir Hampton was being mended. Sir Handel did not enjoy their visit. We're on the air, we're on the air, chanted Peter Sam. He trundled over the bridge near the middle station. Peep, peep, he whistled to Duncan. We're coming. The announcer talked to Duncan, and then they puffed over the second bridge to Quarry Siding where Rusty, Mr. Hugh and the men were waiting to explain about their work. Soon they had to go. Peter Sam whistled, Rusty tooted in reply and they clattered through the tunnel, 
rumbled over the viaduct near the waterfall, rolled at last into the top station. The owner climbed down. We arranged for television, he said, to let everyone see our little old engine. We are proud of him, 95 years old and good as new. There's nothing like him anywhere. Three cheers for Star Lowy. Peep, 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 whistled Peter Sam, and everybody joined in. Scar Lowy smiled. I'm very glad to be home again. Thank you, sir, and all for your nice surprise. Now I'll surprise you. Listen, when I was mended in England, I found my twin. The owner stood. Is there really another engine like you? Yes, sir, chuckled Scar Lowy. There is. Another engine came to be mended too, called Talligan. When the workmen saw us together, they laughed and called us their little old twins. Talligan told me about his railway. It's a lovely one, a Tawin in Wales. Well, sir, they mended us both and sent us home. But I often think of Talligan. He's 95 years old too, just like me. Please go to see him, all of you, and wish him dry rails and good running from Scar Lowy, his little old twin.